So that's how the Paralympics felt. Cool, that was hard work. You think that was hard? You wait to see Graham Whistler try it in a minute. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. How are you all doing? All right. Right, well, I have been. I am pretty new to this, so I'm going to put my little thing over here so I can check my notes out as I go along. Come on, mate, a breath getting all That's most exercise I've done in ages. No doubt. So, anyway, have you noticed anything? No. I'm fat. <laughs> the reason why I'm fat is because I've got this great big lump of metal here that actually does limit me a little bit on the jogging side of things. I do try to jog as much as I can. I just don't do it very often. <sighs> that has actually really worn me out. <laughs> But anyway, seriously, if you are like, like me, a little bit on the overweight side of it, don't worry too much about it, it's fine. You know, because for all we know, obesity may well be the next stage of evolution. And that would basically mean I'm more advanced than you. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? So it's not a bad thing at all. I actually hurt myself getting on the stage. So anyway, two things I like to do before I start a show, I'd like to give two little safety warnings, all right? One of them, this has got a little lead here, right? And I've got no feeling in this leg whatsoever. So as I'm walking around the stage, if you see it wrapping around my leg, run like hell. Because I will land in your lap. There's nothing going to stop it whatsoever. And it's quite a lot to come down on you. You ask any of my ex-wives. <laughs> and there's been a few. <laughs> it's not my fault. I don't even ask them for a joke and they keep saying yes. The other thing I've got to say, by the way, if there is anybody here brave enough to heckle, let me give you this very, very serious safety tip about never ever heckle a comedian that has got the ability to kick you in the head from 50 yards away. <laughs> I might not travel, but the leg definitely does. So anyway, what do you think of the leg? It's quite sexy, isn't it? Have you ever seen these before? Of course you have. You just started watching the Paralympics lately. I could have been in that. But this one is actually works on a suction leg, right? It's got no straps or anything like that. It just sucks onto the stump. Which basically means, if you do ever see me walking through Bournemouth with a big smile on my face, it just simply means I'm dressed to the left. <laughs> you want to suck your leg now, don't you, Alex? Yeah! But with the suction leg, it's got advantages and disadvantages. All right? One of the advantages with a suction leg, if you start to lose too much weight, you lose the suction. Now, if anybody saw me last year in Bournemouth, I was a little bit bigger, and I have lost a bit of weight since then. Oh, well, I'm still fat, but I have lost a little bit. When you lose the weight with a suction leg, you lose, lose the suction at the top. And every time you put your weight on it, it makes a farting noise. <laughs> now this farting noise is absolutely fantastic when you're in a busy club or a pub and you're trying to get a space at a bar. You just go <laughs> and everybody moves out of your way. Right, if, you're in a, if you're in a restaurant where everybody's enjoying a nice fine dining meal, as we all do, and you suddenly stand up and your leg farts, there's not one single person in the world that will ever believe you it's your artificial leg. <laughs> it just won't happen, will it? It's, just, <laughs> it's my leg. Yeah, right, you're farting, mate. <laughs> so basically, what I have to do to make sure that I don't pass too much weight and all that is I have to watch my weight quite often. So I weigh myself. You know, I'm quite, I try to keep fit. And I've got my scales in the kitchen. And my wife has got a very sarcastic sense of humor. She's a bit of a sick bitch at times. That's wife number four. She's got one of these scales that, you know, you, you, you bipods won't have a problem with it at all because basically what you have to do, you walk up like that and you put your foot on it and it sets itself to zero. Anybody got one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was when you've only got one leg, right, and you've got a hop on it and then hop off and then hop back on again to find out your body weight. My missus, in her infinite wisdom, one day turned around to me and she said, when you get on the scales, what you should do is wear your artificial leg. 
I said, it's not my body weight. She said, yes, it is. And I can prove it. I said, how can you prove that? I said, when you go on your lift, right, and you walk into a lift, and it says X amount of kilos per person, that is your body weight. You've got your artificial leg on, and that's what you weigh. I said, very well done, my love. I said, the next time you get on the scales, carry your fucking handbag. <laughs> it's true, it is body weight. So, what do you think? Do you think I was in the Paralympics? With this body of masculinity? No, not a chance, was it? The nearest I've ever been to, the, to an Olympic event was down at, as you look at, for your eyes only, at Bournemouth, when I got threw out for pole vaulting. <laughs> <laughs> Those women that didn't laugh have never been down to, as you look at, for your eyes only, have you? It's like a Speedman Rhino Club, but dirtier. <coughs> The other thing I try to do to keep weight, keep the weight down, by the way, unsuccessfully, as, I, as you can see, the other thing that I try to do is I actually do have a major gym at home. I've got a big multi gym. It's got a rowing machine and all that, all the big boys. So, you know, I use it once a year. I've even got a jelly fire machine. They call it a body sculpture. Has anybody got one? A body sculpture machine? You stand on it, it shakes you to death. I've caught my missus sitting on it a few times, but like. And I also purchased for my wife, I bought her an exercise bike. And one day, while sat in the house all by myself, I was thinking to myself, I went, I was looking at this exercise bike and I thought, it's got little straps on the pedals and all that. And I go, I wonder if I can pedal the bike. As you would do, wouldn't you? If it's on my position, you're looking at it, you'd have a go, wouldn't you? Don't give it. <laughs> So we went to that pump up the carriage, I got myself on this exercise bike, I put the false leg in there and I put the strap on and bugger me I could pedal. I was the happiest man in the world, I hadn't pedaled for 10 years. You can't believe how excited I was. I went out and I bought two, ex uh, two mountain bikes, one for me, one for her. I bragged to all my neighbours that I could now ride a bike. Because of this stupid exercise machine, I could now ride a bike. I'd tried it of course, but like I thought, if I can do it indoors, I can do it outdoors. It's like, it's like riding a bike. So anyway, it comes this Sunday morning, there I am, I'm just thinking to myself, right, this is it, come on, love, we'll take these two bikes out, we'll walk them out onto the street, it doesn't matter. I've told the neighbours, but it's fine. I've walked out, got to the end of the drive, the whole street is out there like it's fucking Jubilee Day. Everybody has stood there waiting to see the fat swap fall off his bike. And I thought, no, don't let it put you off, don't let it bother you whatsoever, you can do this. You can definitely, without a doubt, show them all. So I get on my bike, I put my little strap in, like grabs hold of it, give myself a push off, started pedalling and I was off. And I even did a lap of honour right in the street, just to show all my neighbours what perhaps it was for thinking I was going to fail. There was no way I could ever fail at that. And it was all going absolutely marvellous until I came to the traffic lights. <laughs> and there is something about the human brain, I don't know what it is, it's subconscious or something else. It's the human brain decides that when you arrive at a traffic lights on a push bike, you automatically lean to the kerb. Which is not very good when you've got your artificial legs strapped under a pedal and you go, boof, fall off. <laughs> I actually managed to impale myself to the floor, underneath a bike, push bike, complete, completely trapping myself like a dead beetle. I got a beetle on the back, I was stuck there like that. My missus, completely friggin' useless, fell off a bike from laughing at my misfortune. I had people slowing down, not waiting to help me in any form or fashion. They were just taking pictures of Facebook. <laughs> so needless to say, the two push bikes, actually went and on to eBay, never got used to, never got used again. <coughs> One of the other things that amazes me about the human race, and anybody with a disability will know, will know this very, very true, right? With the human race, right, everybody's conception of disability is totally different. Like you lot there now have all got a different idea about this leg. It's true. Some of you all think, oh, that's really, really cool, that is, look at it, it, looks like it wiggles and does everything. I wouldn't particularly want one myself, but it does look smart. 
Other people will think, oh, well, he's brave. Well, he's not brave. It's not brave is when you do something out of choice. You've got a choice about it. I didn't have a choice. It just fell off. <laughs> then you do have the idiots on the planet, and there's plenty of them around, that actually think I was pretty stupid for losing a leg, like it was an iPhone or something like that. I'd left it in a pub. And then the best one of my favourite ones is the chaps. The minute a chap sees my artificial leg, the first thing they think is, can we weigh him in? <laughs> <laughs> so it's amazing how people's concepts do change over different ideas. Oh, you have the same problem. You know, it, I'm, I'm human, the same as anybody. You know, I seen a mate of mine the other day, I was walking down the road, he's only got one arm. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to go and change your light bulb. I said, how can you change your light bulb with only one arm? He said, I've got the receipt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just a different concept altogether. It's the way people think about life. <coughs> so how many women have we got here? We've got one, two, three, four. Catherine, how the devil are you? Fancy coming in dressing like a post box. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, I've got a postal letter. But it's good, it's a French one. <laughs> Got off track again, don't I? Where was I? <laughs> Women are totally different than men, aren't they? In every form and fashion, especially the way they think, like, you know. And guys, this is true, right? Because I used to work with a load of women. Women think about sex more than men do. Did you know this? No. Does any woman agree with me? No. no. Well, it is actually true. Women think about sex more than men. And the first thing, the normal thing a woman does see, see when she sees a bloke that's walking around the stage, and you might just look at her like, look up. I wonder what he's like in bed then. Does he take it off? Does he keep it on? What's he doing? Well, I can honestly say, after four marriages, it's never been a major problem to me. Right? Because it's not like us guys have to take a run up at it, is it? <laughs> In any form or fashion, we don't. We don't stand in the bedroom door and something like charging the, are you ready? Three, two, one, sex. It doesn't happen that way. But, and are you ready for this, guys? This is a point where you all get jealous. I do actually take it off in bed and I can't change positions without getting out. <laughs> <laughs> now, you might ask yourself why I've been married for four times, I think it's because I keep asking them for a joke and they keep saying yes. And I think they probably rank, uh, fail quite a lot because of my sarcasm. And my sarcasm is pretty bad really, it's like one of my ex-girlfriends, I was in the Britannia pub down in Poole, do you know it? I was in there one day after, after a relationship with my tits up. I was in the Britannia pub with my mates, all said they're having a drink, having a laugh and a joke. And she comes in, the ex comes in and starts giving you all the verbal abuse like they do. But you and your mates, you know, girls, you ain't gonna win with a bloke when he's with his mates, especially when he's sarcastic. And he got a bit verbal and started getting on. And she actually turned around, I can't believe it, I'm still in shock. She called me a wanker. Yeah. And I looked her straight in the eyes and I went, I might well be a wanker, my love, but I'll never think about you while I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't think she ever spoke to me again, actually. Other embarrassing moments with my leg. What else has happened with my leg? Do you know that, that thing when you're actually in a pub and you're a bloke that's six foot, above six foot? You know, you like your own space in a bar, don't you? You, you like, you don't like too much intrusion by people. Come up and say hi, but go away afterwards. Don't, don't invade me. And years ago, I was actually in a club somewhere and I was still at the bar and this bloke has actually overstayed his welcome in my, in my intrusion zone. He's actually stood next to me for too long than he should be. And he's not actually holding a conversation with me or anything. He's just invading my space. So as you do after 15 points, you turn around and say, have you got a problem, mate? And this little meek, wild voice turned around and went, yeah, I am actually, you're standing on my foot. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true, I can't believe it. I am so sorry. You may go now. <laughs> it's, uh, I should have just put this on the floor, really. It would have been easier. All right. What about holidays? Do you all enjoy your holidays? Yeah. yeah. Do you all go abroad? Yeah. yeah. 
Can you imagine the fun that I have in airports? <laughs> Seriously, boy. When you get out of that metal detection, you might go through with your belt on or something like that, and you get a little beat. Different league altogether. What people don't realise is that these, these metal detectors, when you go through on your side, all you do is you walk through and you hear the beep. On the other side of these things is an LED display that actually says how much metal you got on you. So Joe Public will normally walk through there, Dennis will walk in, it'll be <laughs> cigarette lighter, belt buckle, forgot to take my dildo out of my pocket. <laughs> you know, when I walk through, it goes right under the top to bazooka, which actually scares the shit out of the attendants. So I've stopped doing it now, actually. Every time I go to the airport, I wear my shorts so they can all see I've got a metal leg. It actually saves them the embarrassment and it stops me from getting shot. <laughs> it's a mutual agreement I've got with the airports, which is not, it seems to be working. <clears throat> and we're doing for time, I don't even bring a watch, I am sorry, I don't want to be over on. 25 minutes, yeah. Right, the other thing that's amazing about these artificial limbs, or about the fact when you lose a limb, and it's the same with an arm or a leg. I'm not quite sure about a penis, I've never met anybody who's lost one yet. But you get this thing called a phantom leg. Right, now a phantom leg is basically your brain sending messages down to where your leg used to be, and it sends a message back so you can actually wiggle your toes, swing your leg, Play footsie with some bird that you've never met before without her knowing. You know, it's absolutely fantastic when you're stood in a bar and you're talking to a complete knobhead. You can actually stand there and knee him in the bollocks without causing him any physical harm whatsoever, but you still get the same self satisfaction out of doing it. And it's great. It's really worth getting your leg kit off of. No, oh well, probably not. <laughs> I, have, I have done it to quite a lot of people. <laughs> the other problem with a phantom leg is it does make you forget you've got, got a leg missing. And there's been many a times, I lost mine 27 years ago. And there's been many a times I've forgot that I've got, actually lost a leg. And it's usually when you, like, when you put a blanket over you or something like that, your mind can fill your two legs. You can wiggle your toes and do all that. The other one is in a bath. All right? Now the very first time I was in a bath, I was laid there. I was laid there and I went, Time to wash my foot. Because it just felt like I had two legs. So when you pick your foot up and you've only got the one, you fuck because you go Poof! straight underneath the water and it's just a mess. Anyway, I'm getting flashed off, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been fourth gig. I will get the act back to you. <laughs> the Till the next time, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a good one. Right, you two down here.